March 12, 2018 Total Surrender Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Mark 10:28. Our Lord replies to this statement of Peter by saying that this surrender is for my sake and the Gospels, Mark 10:29. It was not for the purpose of what the disciples themselves would get out of it. Beware of surrender that is motivated by personal benefits that may result. For example, I'm going to give myself to God because I want to be delivered from sin, because I want to be made holy. Being delivered from sin and being made holy are the result of being right with God but surrender resulting from this kind of thinking is certainly not the true nature of Christianity. Our motive for surrender should not be for any personal gain at all. We have become so self-centered that we go to God only for something from Him, and not for God Himself. It is like saying, No, Lord, I don't want you, I want myself but I do want you to clean me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want to be on display in your showcase so I can say, this is what God has done for me. Gaining heaven, being delivered from sin, and being made useful to God are things that should never even be a consideration in real surrender. Genuine total surrender is a personal sovereign preference for Jesus Christ himself. Where does Jesus Christ figure in when we have a concern about our natural relationships? Most of us will desert him with this excuse yes, Lord, I heard you call me, but my family needs me and I have my own interests. I just can't go any further, see Luke 9 colon 57 62. Then, Jesus says, you cannot be my disciple. See Luke 14, 26, 33. True surrender will always go beyond natural devotion. If we will only give up, God will surrender himself to embrace all those around us and will meet their needs, which were created by our surrender. Beware of stopping anywhere short of total surrender to God. Most of us have only a vision of what this really means but have never truly experienced it.